and welcome to another episode of Wedflix. I'm Julia Brame, I'm your host, I'm the editor of Unveiled magazine and the editor and founder of Brides at North, the top UK wedding blog for Northern couples. Today on the programme, we welcome Sally Bean of Sally Bean Couture. Now, Sally has a dream job for many. She is a wedding dress designer, and it also turns out that it's Sally's dream job too. There's so much in this episode to inspire any sort of creative, and I hope that you enjoy it. Sally and welcome to the show. It's lovely to have you here. Um, everybody, Sally is um, an amazing dress designer and well you're a couture dress designer aren't you? So Sally do you want to introduce yourself and your business to us? Well hello thank you Julia for inviting me. Uh, my name is Sally Bean and my company is Sally Bean Couture um, and I make bespoke completely one-off dresses originally for each bride, um, but I do have a collection as well, which we'll talk about um, going forward. Um, yes, and I just make everything out of the finest silks. Um, I source my fabrics from uh, European mills, uh, mainly Italy for my silk and France for my lace. And it's just creating really beautiful, the best you can think of, the best I can think of uh, dresses. That's what I do. So for those of you who are listening to this as an audio, Sally at the moment is surrounded in her studio by the most beautiful, I just want to describe for people who might be listening on audio as, as it's sort of frothy tulle and silks and you can see in the background applique flowers and bow detail and ruching and it's almost like a beautiful bride's dressing up box and some veils hanging and she's just surrounded by all this frothy beautifulness. Um, so I want you all to have sort of like this mental image of her sitting in her studio for those of you who are watching on audio. So Sally, what's your background? How did you get, how did you get to this point? Well, I've always worked in fashion. So I did a BA and uh, did very well after that. And then I was sponsored to do my master's at Winchester School of Art in fashion and textiles. Um, and yes, that was great to be, um, have my master's, you know, paid for by an amazing company. Um, and then straight after that, I was employed by Jenny Packham. Um, and when I actually uh, graduated, I didn't particularly want to go into bridal. I just knew I wanted to be a fashion designer. Um, but Jenny Packham had a slot in her, um, in her bridal design department and that's where I went as very junior and I assisted her bridal wear designer um, and that was my first break so yeah that was I was really lucky um, and that was fabulous and then from there I moved on um, worked for lots of other high-end brands um, working my way up from junior to very senior um, and I ended my career before starting my own business uh, working as seven years for Philippa Lepley where I was a design manager I managed lots of areas of her business um, including design and work, looking after high-end clients um, and learnt really about couture dresses there um, previously I'd always worked in high-end fashion but you know we were producing um, in different factories throughout the world so that was yeah. a great experience but my real couture experience came when I worked seven years at Philippa Lepley and I just fell in love with it. And then I launched my own collection. So that's it, yeah. Wow, so that is quite a CV. <laughs> yeah. So. yeah I didn't, there's a few other brands I've worked for and I still do uh, consult now I, I, as a design manager for a few brands, um, notably one uh, occasion where a brand that is stocked in Harrods um, and Yes, so that's fabulous and that helps me uh, with cash flow and things like that. Um, but my main passion is my own business now. Yeah. For someone who kind of fell into bridal, yeah. um, that is, you know, that's the CV of dreams for someone who <laughs> wants to do what you do. But it's obviously kind of, you obviously got into that world and kind of found your niche with it. Um, and run with that, which is yeah. lovely. I mean, I kind of did the same. I wanted to work in fashion magazines um, and somewhere along the line, like the world of bridal came along and captivated me and, yeah. and that's where I've made my career. So I think quite a lot of people do that. Um, maybe it's because as a, a young girl growing up, you don't really, you, you maybe don't really think of bridal as something you should be wanting to do or. Yeah. And at, at um, fashion college, it is sort of seen as a bit of a like, oh you know pass that by kind of thing um 
and focuses on really avant-garde things or where I went to college it was um, that but I've always really loved fine detail and embellishments and that's what that's actually all the companies I've ever worked for and still do is they employ me first for the detail orientated side of my design um, and so in bridal you can invest so much more you know the dresses are more expensive um, they're a, sort of an heirloom piece they're your special dress you know um, and my dresses that I create uh, are kept for years and, and boxed up beautifully and cherished and they're all very personal with little notes and things and everybody wants to pass their dresses down so that's really why I've really held on to bridal is because of just the investment that I can give into the dresses and, and that's why I love them is they really are a piece of me and all the fine detail that's what I love and that's yeah I and that's I agree and I think that for someone who you know like the fashion college thing for someone who wants to work in statement pieces and art pieces there is no better world than the world of bridal fashion yeah yeah we, we as a media company we go every year to see the catwalks at London at Barcelona Milan and you know I love I'm not going to be wearing it well hope I'm not going to be wearing a wedding dress again anytime <laughs> soon but um it's the art and the and the creativity and the skills and the craftsmanship that go into every single piece even you know the runway collections that are put out there to to show them off for the first time and sometimes things are dropped or lines are changed yeah. um I really appreciate that and I think once you're in bridal like you'll never escape that's that's so true and it's so hard to and that's why I love um just creating 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 with my brides because you can just the next dress you can think oh why don't we do this and why don't we do that I mean I don't push my brides everybody has something really beautiful and what's right for them but I always do want to encourage them to have something extra and uh, more detail and just just to really excite me and and every bride is up for it that I have so I'm really lucky uh, with the clients I have yeah so do you have a signature style then um yes yeah, so when I write my biog <laughs> um, about myself always I want to be have a fresh modern look but it's not really I'm not very edgy so it's it's romantic but still my brides are modern they're doctors they they work in fashion themselves they um are city girls they earn their own money wherever they've come from they're independent women in themselves and they want something that isn't going to age or still be timeless but still feel modern in themselves um so that's why my dresses are very romantic but there is quite a uh, in my collection i've created which we'll talk about um there is sort of like a it goes from something very simple um but with just clever cutting to then ultimate like 3d flowers and huge um but the cut of it is still quite modern so the girl still feels herself um so that's yeah modern romantic <laughs> is modern. yeah my favourite style, coincidentally. <laughs> um, so do you um, follow trends then, would you say? Influenced by trends. Um, not in bridal though. I always look to uh, couture, high-end. My personal style, away from my designing, is actually quite modern and clean. Um, some people who meet me they're quite surprised that I'm in like leather trousers, stilettos and a blazer and they think well where's all the flowers? <laughs> it's like well I don't always wear that myself. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I, I laugh because my, it's exactly the same for me. Yeah. So, you yeah. know, I, I'm very sort of like plain in my style and, and like you say, to block colour, yeah. black, white, yeah. that sort of thing. And people, yeah. I think, expect you to um, wear a lot of pink or... Yeah. like a like brown and big tulle. But actually, <laughs> I'm going to make myself something really big and tulle because I just think, why not? And also with size this is something i want to talk about going a bit off tangent i i used to be eat find my figure i you know size eight ten always fine and i could fit anything wear anything but now since i've had a daughter and i've grown i'm probably a size 40 i hate the sizing anyway but you know i'm probably a size 14 and I, my size has grown over um, lockdown, <laughs> but mm -hmm. I'm sort of really noticing about my figure now um, and ways to um, really enhance myself and like a big tool dress, for example, I'm, my mission is, personal mission is to find, make myself something. So I, a size 14 looks fabulous. And then I'm going to put that in my collection too. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, I think that's the thing. I think with, particularly with the couture process, you do make women of any size or yeah. age look yeah. fabulous. And that's yeah. the sort of the secret of it, that, you know, there's the structures, there's the cuts. You're a master of those sort of tweaks and, and touches that can transform a figure and make it show it off to its best, I think. Yeah, I really am passionate about the found, aside from all the detail, which I'm known for, inside the dresses, when people come and try them on, um, they're really blown away by the skill of the corsetry, or even if it's not corset, some, not everyone wants a corset, but the clever cutting of the fabric and the type of fabrics used to really enhance every woman's uh, figure, so that everybody, whatever their size everybody has an area that they don't feel confident about and it's just ways to disguise and enhance and really look at someone's figure really work with them make them feel confident make them just feel the best um and not actually think about that area anymore it's for me to worry about i hide it enhance it every angle you look fabulous um and that's a real challenge that i really enjoy um the technical side of things and so has that technical knowledge then come from your, were you taught it at, at college or has it developed over the years? It's developed and I've always, I think different designers have different approaches and I, um, especially when I had my seven years working for Philippa Lepley, I learned an awful lot there of what to do and what not to do as well. I mean, she's a top couturier, she's top of her game. Um, nothing to say for her but I've just learned what I wanted to do from that in my my company and I wanted corsetry that is a bit softer but um, you feel absolutely fabulous in it um, so I learned a lot through and different brands I've worked for um, there and then I've brought it and then the last few years really enhanced and then working with my own brides seen and learned more so I'm like a sponge but um, mm -hmm. making women look amazing is is the key thing and then the decoration afterwards uh, I think for anyone who wants to work in this sort of industry that's the thing you do have to kind of start at the start and become a sponge and soak it all in and and you know plan to succeed but but within those plans kind of be ready to, to try and test and change yeah. and adapt and I um, really really believe I mean some people uh launch their own brand without any experience and are super successful and and uh, you know particularly australian brands i've seen that of lots of uh, australian designers that i admire um but for me i really would always recommend working um freelancing it working uh, work experiencing um i i run a program it's a bit hazy at the moment with covid but normally i run a program of um work experience here as well because uh, it helps me and it, I teach them, you know, um, so it's so important to get experience and also learn other, other companies' mistakes as well as their successes because, you know, um, there's a lot that you can go wrong with, um, particularly with uh, finances. <laughs> mm. um, you know, in Definitely a because there's a whole business side behind it. So there's mm. the whole sort of designing and playing dress up and, yeah. you know, showing the collections and talking to the brides it's all that lovely like kind of flat, slightly fluffy side yeah. but behind it you have to have a solid business foundation too yeah. so Sally what, what when you're designing are you designing on paper or are you kind of creating or do you, what how does your team work do you have seamstresses behind you and you have a business team or how's yeah. it all kind of well I've just just um so uh for many years it was just me and then I worked freelance with some really high-end seamstresses that work for the super top creme de la creme and who I've worked with in the past and they've helped me um, but my skill is that I can create everything uh, everything I, I can create ultimate luxury wedding dress on my own which I feel comfortable about because then if everything like during covid for example I created a collection myself and so I was really grateful for that of my own skills um, but now I do have um, seamstresses that help me and I have just employed a um, brand advisor who's just coming on board now uh, to help me with the photo shoot and things like that. So I'm just taking my brand to the next level now. So what are your dreams for your brand then? So my dreams, that is such a good question. Um, well, domination, no, well, yes. <laughs> well, obviously, it always is, isn't it? 
Uh, of course. Um, I always, I know the things that are successful about my brand and that is that I'm very much one-on-one -on -one with my clients. So that will never change. So I am pushing forward, but always I'm the accessible one. And I know my br brides come to me for my beautiful dresses, but also for me and the care and love that I give. And um, we have personal WhatsApp conversations about their wedding. I send them messages, they send me messages. Um, and it's really personal and I never want to give that up. Um, that's always going to stay in my business. That's my core business model is me looking after my clients. Um, but then moving forward, um, I'm looking, I'm about to start designing a collection of um, event occasion wear um, because I do have lots of mums that are coming to me um, of my brides. And um, I do, as I said, I do design for other ranges that are very successful. Um, so I'm about to, now I've created this collection mm. <laughs> visually um, and that's just launching now. Uh, then I'm going to go into occasion wear as well. So that's where I am. Right. So tell us a bit about your collection then. It's called Falling Flowers. That's right. Which as an editor, that is a beautiful name. Thank you very much. It helps me immensely to visualise um, styling a shoot or putting together some artwork. Um, but I mean, just that kind of brand encapsulation with the Falling Flowers name. Te now we know all about the kind of detailing behind your designs and, and sort of keeping things fresh and modern that name fits perfectly um and did that did that did that sort of collection name did it take a while to find or did it just kind of fall into place um i've got three i've got three collections i want to create falling flowers is one i've got two more with names that are inspiring me so the 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 it came to me the falling flowers and i'd already had pieces coming together and i was just like yes that's just actually perfect because lots of the detail is um i know you're probably not going to be able to see now um we can it's sort of there are 3d embellishments um there's lots of com combinations i never just use one lace i use about six or seven cut them up reimagine them create them to be completely bespoke for each person um and it's just wild and organic uh, and beautiful and romantic, but still modern. Uh, so yeah. 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 And I kind of, when I first started thinking before I start actually made any of the dresses, um, I was sort of imagining sort of a bride. She was, she's sort of got dressed. She's modern. She's walking through her venue, um, sort of flowers are sort of catching on her train and she's sort of fresh and, just excited for the day, but also looks fab. That was kind of... In, in the dewy morning light. In the dewy morning light. Yeah, yeah, I can completely, from the name, I don't know if it's because I do it as a job, I can completely envisage. It, it to, I think it's because I'm looking at the gowns behind you. For those of you who are watching on audio, there's, you know, there's the floral applique that I mentioned, and there's the, sort of the cascading tulle behind. So I think it's kind of watching Sally and, and talking about the, the work and seeing the gowns behind. It's very, very easy for me to visualise what I would do to create a campaign. Um, so it's working very well. The branding is resonating with me, that's for sure. So like, tell us about the process of your new collection and why you decided to, to go for a collection rather than just staying with the one-on-one -on -one with each client. So I realised, um, well, at the beginning of lockdown, sorry I'll rewind for a while I wanted to have the time to create a collection so that I could take photos um, reach a wider audience um, you know for social media all those things and really show off what I can do but I never really had the time and then when um, because I had lots of clients uh, family you know things like that and it wasn't quite right time for me um, in a business and then when lockdown happened I just it just came to me that I suddenly felt like oh my god I've got to do something here um, take advantage of the positives out of the you know um, mass long time I knew that we were gonna have a long time uh, lockdown mm -hmm. I, I, I just knew that I we'd been traveling as a family to um, um to the philippines for a month before um we just came back middle of march and then two weeks later we were locked down so i could see i'd seen the rest of the world it was already shutting down and england hadn't um really wasn't aware of it but i'd seen it because i'd been in the far east yeah. 
Malaysia for a month um, on holiday. So I knew it was going to happen. And I just thought, right, use this time, Sally, really focus, create four. I thought I was going to create four dresses, but I actually created seven, which I'm proud of. I invested in fabrics and I had lots of fabrics here already. All my clients had were, were postponing until next year. I've got one left this year. Everyone else is postponed. And I just had a sort of free time. And my husband was at home. He wasn't going into work. So childcare. And I was just like, right, use this time. And that's what I did. And I'm so grateful to, 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 to for, for that time. To the circumstances. Yeah, to the circumstances. Really Certainly, I mean, yeah. It, it's, it's, it's great when you kind of lean in and just take it and see the silver lining, I think which you I definitely have done. The coping mechanism, not to worry. So I just used that as my focus. I mean, I wrote a massive 40 thing of household things to do. We've got about three done. But, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I like wrote all these lists, like the week of lockdown, but, you know, when it was just, are we, aren't we that week? I wrote all these lists and then I just thought, no, I'm just, now's your time. This is, use this as a gift. And that's what I did. It wasn't, a, I don't want to, I know hundreds of thousands of people have died, millions of people have died throughout the world. And I'm not taking away from that because that's horrendous, but it's my coping mechanism to give a bit of a barrier about, uh, for myself and the worry and the business worry and the finance, or how's it all going to work, et cetera, et cetera. I just channeled my energy into creating dresses and that took away from the worry. Yeah. For me. It's okay to, um, it's okay to do positive things in a terrible time. Yeah. That's in fact, it's, it's, a, it's a great thing to do positive things in a terrible time. So you should be really proud that you've done that. The thing we need coming out of this is positivity and it's mm -hmm. solid business and it's growth. And this is what we all need to be doing to, you know, just keep on and keeping going. Yeah. Anyway, all that aside. Yeah. Um, so you have a seven piece collection. Yeah. So is that, so if brides want to see that collection and do they, is it just exclusively through your studio at the moment? What are your plans for the future? Are you looking at wholesale? Do you want to have stockists? Well, I have looked at other, yes, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> at the moment, my business model works very well to, to provide luxury dresses and make bespokely for my clients. It's a very good business model. It's very sound. It's um, word of mouth and now, also through um, Instagram and things people are finding me um, through you. Thank you. <laughs> um, so at the moment I'm staying as I am for my bridal because it is very high end. It is very luxurious and that's what people are coming for. So I don't want to dilute it, um, but that's why I am going into have also the um, occasion where side of things that is more open and I will build that side of the brand to be um, accessible everywhere um, going forward with bridal I think I just do all do always want to protect it I am only really interested in making creme de la creme dresses uh, and special dresses and personal dresses and writing messages in people's dresses and things like that um, I am open to working with a really luxury high-end super high-end boutique that may not be in the UK um, that I can supply couture dresses to, a bit like Myra's Willinger or something like that. I like their business model. They, they provide really high-end dresses. But at the, for British brides, uh, well, all brides worldwide currently, everyone's coming to me here. And I'm happy with that because you will get me 100% through your whole yeah. time. Yeah. I'm sure as you kind of grow and pe more people find out about you and, and the demand naturally increases... I'm sure that we'll have this conversation in a couple of years and you'll yeah. be stocking into some, but I, I think you're right. You need to control the brand image. So it has to be the right fit. So like the boutiques have to be the perfect fit for you. And yeah. I can see that being a very kind of organic and natural process. Um, and I would work with them just the same. And so that the brides, even if it is at a distance that they would have me, I'm really, it's really important that I, see even if it's virtually I can still fit dresses virtually um, with an expert there it's just to make sure that yes the luxury the beauty and everything is perfect because I am a huge perfectionist and nothing leaves that isn't perfect yeah I mean the model we've seen quite a lot of um, similar sort of brands like yours do is they have their sort of flagship studio or atelier or um, whatever, um, where you know if you travel to that, then the service is going to be like up a notch. 
you yeah. see that a lot and then they will also put the label into very carefully selected boutiques where you know the service they know is going to be great but it's probably not the same as coming in for the day mm -hmm. to actually meet the designer and and do it that there yeah. um and I, I, that's I, why i'm also though considering things like traveling with my collection and having another base like in a hotel i think i mentioned to that to you before because then there's still it's still me but i'm not in this location you know so i know some yeah. do that where they come to london that way around but i think i'll do that going up north but at the moment uh, or france or wherever you know um, yeah still in my mind but it is so important like you said to i just don't want anything to be diluted not with not with the Sally Bean Couture range because otherwise it's not couture. Yeah, totally. And hopefully we can help you when you bring it up north. That'll be fun. Yeah. I'll be so, I'll be ringing on your doorbell. Ooh, <laughs> I can't wait for that. It's right. That sort of thing's right up my street. I'll just come and sit amongst the dresses and chat all day long yeah. to brides. That's just my favourite thing to do. Um, okay, so work-life balance then, Sally. Does it exist? I am a workaholic, I, w I won't deny. And I always have been. I think you need to be to be a successful fashion designer in the industry. Um, but I don't, um, what's the word? I don't begrudge it. I love it. <laughs> um, I have a two-year-old daughter and I'm married. And um, at the moment, lockdown is working. She's in nursery right now. Uh, thank God it's reopened. <laughs> um, but she... I do create around her, um, I, but I do have lots of time where I spend with her, but then I work into the evening um, and I have, you know, I, I, my time is stretched, but I make sure that she feels she's got my, my attention. But thank goodness she's so used to since birth. I mean, I've been creating, even when she was just born, I had client orders. So I've been creating dresses around her her whole life. Um, literally, as she was a newborn, I had six weeks later, I had to create I had a wedding not mine obviously well could have been mine but it was a bride's and um yeah so literally from birth she's been used to it she's when I was creating this collection just before the photo shoot we shot two weeks ago um literally the whole it the whole collection had eased out of the studio and it was in every room of our house um and she's just great. She picks up pins. You know, she's just used to it now. So I'm lucky there. But I do really yeah. focus on giving her her time too. Yeah, your experience sounds exactly like mine. I've got two daughters, seven and four now. Um, and I've worked throughout. So no maternity leaves. But I think if you're going to be a success at what you do and, and like, you know, steer your own ship, you do need to be prepared to put the work in. But you choose something that you love, so it almost becomes your hobby as well as your job. That's so if right. someone said, what's your hobby? I'd be like, what? <laughs> what's a hobby? Yeah. But my hobby is my job, and my job is my hobby. And, and, and you, do, you have to be prepared to lean in, fit it around your children, work late if you have to, you know, get some support with the childcare. It, it's, it's a juggling act, but um, I'm actually... My, my smallest goes to school, fingers crossed, in September. And I'm actually a little bit frightened of having sort of that sort of balanced hours coming up. I don't know if I can work anymore within the normal framework of a nine to five. Yeah. And I probably won't. Yeah. Um, because I'm not used well, to it. I'm used to nine to five. Time. I think now the uh, world has turned on its head, hasn't it? And lo lots of businesses aren't returning to the typical working week and I do think that life pleasure should also you should be always have time to enjoy what you're doing so if it is two hours from 10 till 12 where you're I don't know go for coffee with a friend or whatever but then you're working till 10 p.m at night as long as you're not killing yourself I, I think why not you know um t turn life on its head and make it that's why I also I give uh, appointments to clients out of hours um, which people really, really love is because I do appointments on Sundays. It's great for me. My daughter can go to her grandparents or my husband or whatever. And I have a set day and I see clients on Sundays and then they are not taking any time out of their working week or their family time or anything. So it's all balanced. And if it's working for you, go, go for it. Yeah. Yeah. And working on the weekend can be lovely because it's just a little bit more chilled. 
Keep Friday, thinking. Saturday, Sunday, always a bit more chill. Yeah. So people always take those days off, but I actually quite like to work them because you get a lot done because yeah. other people are busy doing their actual hobbies. Yeah. Um. <laughs> yeah, I really just said, what's, my, what, what's your hobby? And I was like, oh, actually, I don't know. I think I actually like doing nothing when I'm not doing mm. anything. That's a nice thing to do, nothing. Yeah, just like terrible TV or maybe a bath. Yeah. Oh. Um, yeah. 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 My hobby is Netflix. <laughs> Or going for long walks on my own. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, um, okay. So what do you think has been the secret to your success? It is the detail in my dresses, I think. And that I've always kept my standard. And from launching, I mean, with the experience of working very high end, I've always had that higher end eye. But I always, I've, I never drop my standards I never release anything I'm not isn't a standard of so I've always approached my brand as a brand even from day one um and I think sometimes you need to detach slightly detach be completely in your company but realize it is a company and how do you want it to be what do you want it to look like what do you want your voice to be and to just be very consistent and um keep your standards high and then everything follows through from what you're creating to who you're talking to and how you present your business. Yeah. So have your brand in mind at all times yeah. and keep it on that level. That's yeah. the forefront. That's what you're presenting. So that's good advice. Um, and what's been your proudest moment so far? It is every time a dress is completely, completely complete. And I literally, it's very hard to give them up and I sit with them for when it's the final packing I, and I do the final packing, I do the final check, everything, check everything's perfect. After the bride has left with her final check, then I have the dress normally 24 hours where I press it perfectly ready for the day. And it's just looking at it and just thinking, it's just a pride of, of the beauty of the craft, the art of it, whether it's completely me that created it or with my team. Um, so it's every single dress that's just about to leave. And they're really hard to get rid of. And that's actually also why I wanted to create my own few beauties. Because then I can Yeah, have them. have them there with you. Yeah. yeah. The stroke can look at. Yeah. And so, and so what's, what's next then? What's in the next five years? What's coming up? We've already talked about your, your occasion. Where, where do you see yourself kind of in five years time? Can I say one year? Yeah, one year is great. Okay, so I'm going to have... Uh, Currently, all my brides come to my home atelier, and it's lovely. It's a lovely room. It's nice. I live in Ealing. It's London. You know, it's it's great. But I, I before lockdown, I was planning by now to have moved into a separate atelier space. But lockdown created lots of uncertainty, and you know, investing in a in a property is a big thing. Um, bigger now uh, with cash flow and things. So, but. That is going to be by the end of the year. I'm just saying this out loud. <laughs> well, it's good to have. Re it's good to write your goals down. Yeah, I've got it written down for keeping you accountable. Yeah, I really want to have created the separate space and um, that to grow on it. Grow is my Sally Atelier location. It will still be in West London. Um, I had a spot that I really loved, but that's gone now. Fine, you know um on the hunt again um and then moving forward it is to level up and just keep leveling up and to become more of the brand that i want it to be and i'm just very proud of where it is i'm proud of the acorns with uh it's all the saplings now um and i just want them to my oak trees to grow and and then other offshoots will come because i have a vision of more of what i want to create from my brand but I'm very aware not to rush ahead. Um, yeah. That's good advice. Good advice to self, for sure. You just need to take it in steps and put the work in at every step. It's always the case. And if you jump too far ahead, you get in, you get in too deep waters, I think, sometimes. You do. And yeah. I think from a mindset point of view, that you can overwhelm yourself and then actually everything can crash when you've got a great foundation already. But, you know, things from a, a, an advice for other business owners, um, Things do go wrong. Uh, cash flow runs out. You know, times are good, times are bad. 
Um, I'm not saying that I don't have those times, I do, but I just really am focused. I just know that my brand is going to be a success. I just have that in my heart. I just know it. I do everything with love. I try my best. And for other business owners, if you have that in your heart and you just know it's right, keep going because it is right. You know. Yeah. From the moment we first connected, really quite recently, I felt a real affinity to you because you have got that belief and passion. I believe it too. It's something that I have within me and I see it in you. So I think we've sort of gotten on on that level that we're like, right, let's, you know, just get this done, make the magic happen. And, and the magic isn't magic. It's hard work. Yeah, that's so, true. I'm believe, that, I'm true believe doing what is sing, makes your heart sing. And yes, I really, I mean, I'm in awe of what you achieve. Julia, I mean, literally, you're on another level of being able to get stuff done. You're like superwoman. Um, all planning, all planning. <laughs> Yeah. But, you know, you, I, I do really admire women that are really bossing it, you know, and they're just getting it done and they believe in themselves. And, yeah, people have wobbles, ups and downs, but they're just creating, creating and it's successful. And, yeah, I want to be around those women. So, Sally, a bride who might have found you via our, um, via our show, how, would, how will she um, get in touch with you? How does she find you? Well, please, you can contact me via my Instagram. All my handles are the same, Sally Bean Couture, um, www.sallybean.co.uk. Um, you will come through to me always, and we'll just start a chat. Um, if you are particularly don't live too close to London, um, I'm doing Zoom appointments just like this, uh, or if you're listening to me, <laughs> uh, virtually. First of all, I think that's quite great in these times. And we have a really good chat, uh, find out about you. Um, then we start a WhatsApp conversation, really share ideas, everything. And then we eventually meet and I create you something fabulous. So Wow, <laughs> how exciting. I mean, it's easy to chat about the business side and get excited about that side of things, but the bridal side's even more exciting. The yeah. ladies will be coming in to see you or their mums, you know, or anyone who wants to kind of have a really yeah. special gown made. That's exactly it. I mean, not that there's so many events right now, but I do have um, mums coming and I do have girls that have had bright, uh, bridal dresses from me before and we're creating beautiful summer things. So um, mm. there's, lot, there's lots that I can create. So just contact me really, <laughs> please. Yeah, I, I will be in touch. <laughs> and you mentioned before your kind of internship programme. Yes. Um, so I know that this is kind of paused at the moment, but it, is it the same thing? Anyone who's interested, they should get in touch with you directly? Yes, I'm really keen, particularly you, uh, you need to be at least two, second year in uni um, of a fashion college um, because really the level of the construction and, and everything, it's too advanced to be a very beginner. You need, you need an understanding of fashion. Um, and construction. It doesn't matter if you don't know about couture, but you need to really be at least second year at fashion college. That's my prerequisite. Um, and then, yes, um, write a letter to me, write an email on my on my website, um, and we'll have a chat. Um, I'm also got other areas like PR um, and my socials. If you're more interested in that side, um, I'm keen to hear from you. Wow. Well, Sally, thank you so much for being our guest today. It oh, has been a lovely chat um, and I've really enjoyed finding out more about your business and your dreams and your hopes and your building of your brand. And I know you're going to go far. So thank you so much. Thank you so much, Julia. I've really loved it.